So following up from my last video, I did some looking, and these capacitors are actually rated at 100 amps when they measure the capacity of them. What I'm guessing is that the slower you charge them, the lower it's going to look like the capacitance is, because there's going to be less power lost in the internal resistance of the capacitors. To try to find out if this is correct, what I'm going to do is actually charge them up again in between that 1 and 3 volt area, only this time I'm going to charge them at a quarter of an amp of current constant, and then I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm going to charge them at 5 amps constant current. If I'm correct in my assumption, I should actually see less energy being put into the capacitor bank to get to the same charge level at that quarter amp than I did at the one amp and I should see even more energy at the five amps. When it goes into the equation because it's not accounting for the internal resistance of the capacitors it's going to show that they actually have less capacitance. But we'll see what I come up with after I do the experiment. So I have my power supply here that's going to be feeding the power into the capacitor bank. Right now the bank is at 0.84 volts and I'm going to plug it in and you can see I'm at just about a quarter of an amp constant current. Unfortunately when I do this I'm going to have to actually multiply my voltage times the current now because I won't have that one amp um, multiplier in there but it'll be interesting to see if I'm correct that it's the internal resistance that's giving me the skewed values. So we can see that we're approaching 3 volts of charge on the capacitor bank. As soon as it actually hits the 3 mark, I'm going to shut off the data acquisition. So we're over 3 volts, we stop, save everything, and then I'm going to disconnect the power supply, dead short the power supply, and set up the current as close to 5 amps as possible. Now that we've got it set to 5 amps, we're going to discharge the capacitor bank. With a load tester. We need to get it below 1 volt so we can get the same measurement that we had before, only at the higher charging rate. So hopefully that's low enough. We're going to hook the meter back on.
and we can see we're back down to 0.8 volts. Disconnect the power so I don't get any arcing while I hook these up and hook the power supply back on. Now we're going to set the meter to record again. And we'll connect the power supply. And we'll come back as soon as it's fully charged and then download the data. So I did the same thing that I did in the previous video and I took and I graphed the watts from the point of it being at 1 volt to 3 volts over the time and then I did a best fit line for the data and got the equation here. So for the quarter amp charge our equation is here we take the integral of that equation and we get this here. It took 3,088 seconds in order to charge from 1 volt to 3 volts at that quarter amp rate. So we evaluate that integral over the area of 3,088 and 0 and we end up with this final equation here and it gives us 1569 joules. We take those joules and we put them into our original equation that we had at the top and we evaluate that for the capacitance and I end up getting 392 ferrets of capacitance at a quarter amp charge. I had 400 when I was charging at 1 amp. Now when I do the same thing at a 5 amp charge, if I was right in my assumption, this 5 amp charge would actually give us a higher capacitance value from the internal resistance um, of the capacitors basically losing less power in the charging process. So I go through the same process here, find the formula just like I did on the quarter amp charge. This one took 157 seconds to go from 1 volt to 3 volts and it ends up giving me 1573 joules which when we solve for the capacitance comes out to 393 ferrets. So I am wrong in my assumption that the charging current is what's going to be affecting the capacitance that I'm seeing and trying to calculate here. So I did one more test in order to see if I would get different results. I actually charged up the bank of capacitors to 13 volts and measured it as a charge from 13 to 15 volts. I did this at 5.1 amps a current and I graphed the watts over the time that it took to charge this. I took that equation from the best fit line did the same integration to it. It took 182 seconds in order to charge from 13 to 15 volts. And I came up with 13,066 joules. Using the same formula as before, I put in my 13 and 15 volts at the two points and I solved for the capacitance and I got 466 ferrets of capacitance. This pretty much tells me that apparently the way I'm testing this is flawed or I'm missing something. Um, I'm going to have to do more research on this and see what mistakes I'm making and hopefully figure out the correct way of doing this. Hopefully you enjoyed this and if you find any errors in my calculations or 
know what mistakes I'm making, please let me know, and thanks for watching.